Hi guys, welcome to another lecture and today we will be discussing about the latest algorithm and diagnosis of pediatric TB which was given by NTP in 2022. So, what is the current algorithm of diagnosis of pediatric TB? So, firstly, uh, in which patients you have to suspect TB and which patient you have to investigate? So, what are the features? So, persistent fever, persistent fever for more than, for more than two weeks without a known cause. See, each and every word is very important. If you know a patient has viral fever, if you know a patient has typhoid fever and it is untreated or it is ceftriaxone resistance, then obviously the fever will be there for more than two weeks. So you, that patient is not eligible for TB. So without a known cause is very important. Then there is unremitting, unremitting cough for more than two weeks. Unremitting cough for more than two weeks. See, the child has dry cough or wet cough, unremitting, which is not relieved on medications and, you know, the child has half cough. Then weight gain, weight loss, sorry, weight loss, uh, more than 5%, more than or equal to 5% in last three months. In last three months, see, in adults, you might be, you know, seeing that it is more than 10% uh, in last six months. But in pediatric, it is different. Plus, also, if there is failure to gain weight, failure to gain weight, because in pediatrics, failure to gain weight is e as equal as weight loss. And, and the fourth criteria, very, very important, contact, contact with a TB patient, contact with TB patient in last, in last two years. So these, if I, any one of the four criteria is fulfilled, then you can go for diagnosis of tuberculosis. And the first test you have to go for, uh, in a patient of tuberculosis is chest x-ray. Please do not answer uh, Montuk's test. Montuk's test is not there in the algorithm right now. Uh, obviously, where there are centers and where there is Montuk's test and, you know, centers where, you know, latest guidelines are not seen because in peripheral centers, uh, still the guidelines take time to, you know, take effect. But the current guidelines are very specific and they do not mention the use of uh, Montuk's test anywhere in their algorithm. So when you go for chest, chest x-ray, you might have any of the three outcomes. So first outcome is chest, chest x-ray suggestive of TB, highly suggestive of TB. Okay. So what are the chest TB, uh, findings that will show you that there is a uh, tuberculosis? So first is miliary pattern, miliary pattern. There is a diffuse micronodular snowstorm appearance, diffuse micronodular Use micronodular snowstorm. Snowstorm like pattern. So, if it is there, miliary pattern, then you can say that it might be tuberculosis. Then there is intrathoracic or mediastinal or hilar lymphadenopathy. Intrathoracic lymphadenopathy. Okay. Usually it is hilar or mediastinal. Also, bilateral hilar uh, you might see in patients of sarcoidosis, but again, TB is very common in India. So, first thing you have to rule out is tuberculosis. Or there are chronic fibrocavitary, chronic fibrocavitary shadows, fibrocavitary shadows. This is very important. If either of the three is present, then it is more uh, suggestive of tuberculosis. Or X-ray is non-specific. Now, what are the non-specific findings if there is consolidation? Consolidation might occur with any infection. So, consolidation is there or there is bronchopneumonia. So, these are non-specific findings. And the third scenario, third case scenario is that X-ray is absolutely normal. Okay, so this is the diagnostic algorithm of pulmonary TB. You have to be very, very careful. This is the diagnostic algorithm of pulmonary TB. Extra pulmonary TB may have a normal chest X-ray. So please do not take this algorithm for a patient of uh, non-pulmonary TB. Okay. So in the first case that X-ray is highly suggestive of TB, you have to go for gastric aspirate, gastric aspirate, or induced sputum or induced sputum and you have to go for nucleic acid amplification technique test CBNAT cartridge based nucleic amplification acid technique for mycobacterial tuberculosis and in pediatric patient that uh, the, the investigation you go for is NAT in adult you might go for uh, sputum microscopy or AFB scan in pediatrics please remember we go for NAT because 
pediatric TB is possibacillary. It will not be diagnosed if you go for certain staining because 10 raised to 5 concentration is not there in pediatric population. So, uh, and I, again, obviously, if you go for gastric aspirate, it's very likely, very unlikely to get ZN stain positive. So, that is very important that you go for NAT for MTB. And in now, all pediatric patients, the screening, if you go for NAT, RIF sensitivity is done for each and every patient. Uh, one drug sensitivity is checked for uh, each and every algorithm. So in every patient, you send, nucle you send nucleic acid amplification technique for in mycobacterium tuberculosis, then obviously you will uh, also get the drug sensitivity report of at least rifampicin. In some places, it is isoneosite plus rifampicin, but it is at least rifampicin, okay? So that is what you do. You go for NAT. Now NAT is positive. NAT is positive or NAT is negative. Now, if NAT is positive, very good. You have diagnosed a patient of TB. It is a microbiologically confirmed TB. And again, drug sensitivity testing is always done with the patient now. And rifampicin resistance is at least checked for in each and every patient in whom you send TB NAT. Now, if the NAT is negative, then you merge it with the algorithm of the non-specific findings. In this, what you do is you give amox or or amoxclav, amoxclav for at least seven days, at least seven days, seven to 10 days. It is generally taken as seven days and then repeat x-ray and repeat findings, repeat findings at after 14 days. Now, if you still have the same non-specific findings, which are not uh, treated with augmentin or amoxicillin, then you have to check for uh, your both algorithms merge over here. And then you check for that if there is a lymphadenopathy, if there is a peripheral lymphadenopathy. Okay, check for lymphadenopathy. That is the first sign. Second is that you take another sample for CBNAT. You try CBNAT again because sometimes the sample is inappropriate or the child has taken some breakfast in the morning and the child is not NBM, obviously the report will not be uh, proper. So you go for another NAT, aspirate or BAL, you can go and you can seek a review from higher center. And again, if there are two criteria, you go for second NAT. If it is positive, then again, you reach the home run. If it is negative, then it is uh, if you think that nothing else is probable, if you think that TB is the only diagnosis that fits, then this is clinically diagnosed TB. It is clinically diagnostic, t clinically diagnosed TB and you have to start the appropriate treatment for the patient. So that is the second algorithm. Now, if the x-ray is normal, then you can check for extra pulmonary TB, check for EPTB. Uh, you go for, uh, you can go for higher investigations like CCT. If you are uh, thinking that, okay, X-ray is not good. X-ray quality is not good. X-ray, uh, the child is not staying stable for the X-ray. So you can go, you can sedate the child, you can do CCT and you can refer the patient to higher center. It is less likely that TB might be there. At, at least pulmonary TB might be there and you can refer the patient to higher center. So this is the algorithm that is currently advised by the, uh, you know, the government of India in NTP. And there are, uh, you know, this are the primary guidelines. Obviously, CT scans and ultrasonography may yield better results, but this is the general diagnostic algorithm that is followed by TB. Here you can see that Montux test is not available anywhere. If the Montux test is available, it may be clinically correlated. You can clinically correlate the findings of Montux test. So for Montux test, you have to remember that uh, in uh, more than 10 mm, or more than 10 mm is positive in normal patient, but more than 5 mm is positive in HIV patient. So this is the one fact that I want you to remember that if it is more than 5, it is positive in HIV. In normal patient, it is more than 10. But again, it has to be clinically correlated because it does not differentiate between infection and disease. That all things you know. So that is why this is the new latest algorithm for diagnosis of pediatric TB. I hope you like the video and uh, if you like my effort, please like, share and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and please download the awesome app.
where we have multiple lectures and we have every uh, everything there is there for everyone we have uh, you know content for residents we have content for neat pg fmg ine set residents we have content for ug students so if you haven't already checked out our app please go there and check the app right now and i'll see you in the next one